All right, would you mind saying your name? My name is Dean Wilson, D-E-A-N-W-I-L-S-O-N. And why are you here today? I'm a plaintiff on behalf of the Insight Supervised Injection Site, which is a comprehensive medical facility in the downtown east side that caters to uh, addictions. One small aspect of it is the supervised injection that seems to be drawing all the controversy, yet it is also has peer and professional counseling, referral to other treatment. We have one of the most successful detoxes in Canada on the second floor, and we have rehabilitation rehabilitational transitional housing a real mouthful on the third floor so that people instead of just being thrown out of a, out of a detox after 10 days right back into the maelstrom um, they can spend three to six months living there um, and 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 get their lives together after they're cleaned up and why do you think it's important for people to be supporting insight well you have to be from the downtown east side to understand what happened. Yeah, as it was explained in court and I explained earlier today, it points in the early 90s and mid 90s, you literally were walking over a dead body a day or more, especially if it was welfare day, maybe five or six, to, to get anywhere. People were dying. We had the highest rate of HIV outside of sub-Saharan Africa. and. It, it was it was atrocious what was happening and and it was per, three percent aboriginal population when they're only four percent of the population in british columbia so we had a, an institutional racism happening here we had all these uh, intangibles come together to cause one of the worst health epidemics in fact um, a, a, a provincial health epidemic was actually called by the health minister and so we uh, a group of people got together and started a group called the Vancouver Air Network of Drug Users, VANDU, and we decided to um, you know look for alternatives and um, you know we started cherry picking all over the world and we came up with um, you know heroin prescription, supervised injection and other other um, health uh, interventions and um, we, we just started looking after ourselves and of course uh, the government tried to federal government tried to shut us down and I became a plaintiff in um, taking this to the Supreme Court of Canada and today is the day. Wow, and could you quickly, if for young people and students in particular, if you wanted to give sort of a message to them? Well, I just think keep keep doing, what, especially the Students for Sensible Drug Policy, keep doing what you're doing. You know, your future, you know, is being dictated here today. First of all, the drug laws are a lot, you know, they talk about the disproportionality or whatever the legal term is. But look at the drugs are, the drugs are not, first of all, they're not, they're not something to just get involved with. This isn't, this isn't just some party thing. And um, I, I, you know, after 44 years of addiction and now I'm straight, I don't advise anybody to wait in that water, to tell you honestly. We're, we're not about condoning drugs. What we're trying to do is to say to all young people is to stay appraised of the situation, make sure that you know about what the laws, because I think the laws have a greater effect on you. But at the same time, drugs aren't the answer either. But, but keep doing what you're doing because, as you say, the laws are harsher than, than uh, you know, than what they're trying to prevent. But that the, the, the kids should be aware of what's happening in the to stay politicized. And whether it's politicized over insight or not, stay political. Because uh, it's the only way. You've got to change from within. And uh, I think the young people are going to be the people that are going to make the decisions soon. And you guys just stay active, stay politicized. Well, thank you so, so much. You're welcome.